and he doesn't like Jeff Farrell. I don't want, I just don't really want to spend too much time. I don't want to have a beer with him or anything like that. I mean, this is the guy that, I mean, isn't that right, people? Hello. I'm just telling Jeff oh how God. awesome he is. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Worrell, Mr. Carmel, right here. Hello, Don Farrell with Actors Theater of Indiana, one of the co-founders. And thank you so much for spending some of your lunchtime here with us here at Actors Theater of Indiana for Lunch Break with ATI. I don't even know what episode we're on right now, but we're... We're in the teens, or maybe in the we're knocking on twenties, um, and we've got a lot going on today. Just real quick, obviously, our dear, dear friend Jeff Worrell is here as our guest, but also, if you might hear, you might hear some noise in the background. Possibly, we've got so much going on with Actors Theater of Indiana right now. We are in the midst of going through. Oh my goodness! Hey, Kevin, how many videos? 354. 354 video submissions for, for two shows. For you, you, did you hear that? That's Kevin Casey in the background, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Ah. <laughs> Very talented people, though. I'm listening to them. They really, really, it is amazing. Uh, and from all over the United States, uh, we have uh, yeah people from all over uh, sending in their video submissions for our upcoming productions of our 2022-2023 season of Nonsense and Violet, our first two shows that we're casting. And so Kevin Casey, our production stage manager, has assembled, what was he, what did he say, 350, 354, 350, unbelievable. So we're going through a lot of videos. We're blessed with the amount of talent and the amount of people that are really interested in Actors Theater of Indiana and our productions. And so they are constantly, I just stepped out to be able to do video podcasts, Judy Fitzgerald, Cynthia Collins, uh, my colleagues, along with Richard Roberts, who's directing our upcoming production of Violet. Uh, that's our second show. And then um, uh, Karen, uh, oh, uh, Karen's last name. Wait, wait, Kevin, what's Karen's last name? My goodness. You need Karen's directing. Call. I need, I need, yes, I need an ear in ear. <laughs> Karen, who's directing our nonsense. And we've got uh, Nathan Perry, who's music directing. Uh, for our production of uh, Violet and um, yeah, it's so and uh, Jay Schwant, who's music directing our production of Nonsense, and all of us trying to uh, go go through uh, all these different videos. So that's going to be going on, continuing in the background as we get to talk to Jeff. And of course, if you don't know Jeff, oh my gosh, what kind of rock have you been living under? Uh, Jeff Worrell, definitely like Mr. Carmel, he has done so much for our community. Uh, so much for the arts, so much for uh, all of the citizenry, citizen, citizenry, that's a fun word, citizenry of Carmel. Um, you've been here from, you moved here from Iowa, as what I learned, is that right? Iowa, yes. Uh -huh. So you, Have you heard of it? I have heard of, uh, of <laughs> okay. a wonderful, wonderful yeah. state, yeah. beautiful state. Pigs and corn. Pigs and corn, yeah. yeah. And you and your lovely wife and your family, everybody here. Uh, so what brought you to Indiana? A job. A uh, job. I was uh, offered a job while we were over in uh, Iowa. And um, I actually turned it down because I loved what I was doing. I was working for Iowa State University. Oh, great uh, school. But it was, a, it was a great job. But the one small thing was I really wasn't making any money. Ah. So when I came home, told my yeah, I was offered this job, moved to Indianapolis, but I told him no because obviously I love what I'm doing here. Yes. Go Cyclones, and she said, "You call that man back right away." Does it pay? <laughs> yes, it pays. Okay, all right. So that's how we ended up here. Awesome, awesome. And you have been doing so much. I mean, and of course, obviously, Carmel Fest. He's been. You've been doing this for how many years now? Twenty. Thirty-eight. Tw 30, thirty. No, thirty. Thirty, 30 years. You have been 30 years towards uh, Carmel Fest, and uh, of course, we love the spark buttons. Yeah. I've got my spark button on, doing a test. Uh, our dear friends, Philip and Scott in the background, are we are we bothering anybody in the background with our lights? You're good. Are we doing okay? Okay, we got the thumbs up from, from the tech team back there saying we're not gonna yeah. throw anybody off. But I even brought in one of my, uh, I think this was a spark button from last year, but yes. I've got them also in my drawers and everything. Yeah. And these things, look, this is from, was this last year's? That this was last year's. This yeah. is last year's. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when you take the little the little pin yeah. and it touches the metal, the metal touches the metal, the lights come back on. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we've got, oh, different so color. I, we changed to blue this year. Yeah. I, that's mm -hmm. my favorite color. Yeah. <laughs> all right, see, I knew that. See, so, thank you. Yeah. Thank You're you, because it's all about me, right? <laughs> it's gotta be, no, I'm kidding. But I remember our dear friend Jack Badger, yes. who used to come in, and he would come into ATI, our offices, and sell us yeah. spark buttons. You were doing the same thing, selling for, I mean, 
So wow, many years. 28, this is our 28th year selling spark buttons. Uh -huh. So now we did not sell last year and the year before. I just didn't feel right asking our merchants for coupons and discounts and freebies last year, right. everybody coming out of COVID. But yeah, we started in 1994. 1994. Yeah. And, and I always say, Jack didn't really sell spark buttons. He wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> uh, he would say, come on, you live in Carmel, you got to have a spark button. Of course, you had no choice. Oh, who could turn him down? You could never. He came in to the office like he came in and it was like oh hey jack good to see you yeah. and we talk and everything he said of course i bought my spark button from right. like a couple of them and then uh i got um and then he would i buy them and then like i don't know about another couple five days or something <laughs> comes by he comes back in the next week and he's like hey jack yeah how's it going he goes time for spark buttons i'm like oh, i love i've that. already bought my spark buttons but Okay, I'll buy another part of Smart Button. Thank That's you exactly so much, right. guys. That is so Jack. I um, actually got to speak to his lovely wife last night. Yes. Isla. How is Isla, Isla doing? We she's love Isla. She's doing great. She's recovering from COVID. I was trying to oh, no, she uh, got the COVID. Invite, invite her to uh, some stuff for Carmel Fest, and she's got COVID, but she is she was reminiscing about the good old days when Jack and she, you know, yeah. I mean, behind every good man, there's a great woman and she right. was behind Jack all the time selling those spark buttons. Yeah, absolutely. And, and talk for those of you who don't know about the spark buttons, which I'm really surprised, but if you don't, you want to get in on this. Yeah. Uh, so talk a little bit about what the Rotary uh, Club and the city of Carmel sure. do with the, with the spark buttons and, and the wonderful merchants, because you really do get great, great deals if you buy a spark button for only 10 bucks, That's it's right. only $10 a spark button. Yeah, I like to say you actually make money when you buy uh, a spark button. That's a great way so, of putting yeah. it. So inside, there's a little, uh, a promo, we call it a promo card. That's new this year. Go. There's okay. a QR code on the here. back, thank you. Here we go, there's the there's, card. Yeah. And a QR code on the back. QR. And you just scan High -tech. your phone, and then there are dozens of deals. Uh, some of the ones I remember off the top of my head. Uh, Muldoon's, Woody's Restaurant, uh, or Library Restaurant, I should say, Woody's, um, a free coffee mug at, um, yes. at All Things well, Carmel. I got my coffee yeah, mug and that, on that one. I haven't had it punched for this one, so I get another coffee yeah, okay, mug. Okay, there you I go. I have more than one That's spark right. button. That's right. So you, um, and actually that coffee mug is a special coffee mug. It really? actually will keep your coffee two degrees warmer than an average coffee cup. Yes, only available through Carmel Fest and all things Carmel. Yeah, two they're degrees. even scientific. Look, yeah. they've got QR That's codes. Amazing. They they can they're technological yeah. with their coffee. Yeah, unbelievable. Now, very scientific. Now, a lot of people don't know, you know. So why do we sell these things? Mm -hmm. um, well, obviously, we're raising money for the fireworks. But really, if you don't have a spark button, mm -hmm. you know, we we actually we get kind of the honor system going here, but we're going to ask you not to watch the fireworks. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's I mean, right. You know, that's you right. Don't have you your, don't, I mean, hey, it's a community thing. It takes right. all of us, right? That's right. It village. is the honor system. I won't be out there, you know, crossing off names. But if you don't have a spark button, you know, you really don't have the authority mm -hmm. by... Uh, the power is vested in me to, no. to watch uh, the fireworks. So that's why we're asking you to buy a spark. But, but the city of Carmel is very, very good friends with someone who does watch. Yes. Santa is always <laughs> watching. Oh, that's great. So yes. keep that in mind, Carmel. Yes. Santa's watching. You want to be a good boy and a big good girl <laughs> that you bought your spark button. Because you know... You might get away with it here, but you're going to come to pay for That's it come right. December. That's right. That is, you should come out on the road with me. Uh -huh. We got the shtick going, don't we? Yeah. So, I would love to. I would so instead to. of looking up, if you don't wear a spark button, you only have to look at the ground for 23 minutes and 32 <laughs> seconds. That's it. That's one it's heck of a show. Lot. It's a great show. 23 is always my goal. So who who do you guys? I mean, really, uh, honestly, the it, it is people come from all over to see these mm -hmm. this fireworks yeah. display, and it's just it's a one. And you guys are doing it two days. It's not two just days. one day. Three shows, two days. Three yes. shows, two yeah. days. Yeah. In two different locations. Yes. Yeah. So we'll do on July third. Uh -huh. We'll shoot at our east border of Carmel, okay. Badger Field. Oh, Badger. North Jack Christian. Badger. Yep. Check we'll bedroom. shoot there, um, and then also at the exact same time, synchronized to an atomic clock, uh, will be the West Side West Park. Uh -huh. That'll be on July 3rd, 9.45 p.m. 
synchronized to music on beloved 91.3 FM, WHJE, home of the Greyhounds. Oh, yes. Okay. You know that. I do, yes. And then on July 4th, same time, 9.45 p.m., we'll have our finale show right here in Central Carmel. The location is actually top secret. Top secret. I'm not going to be allowed to tell you, but I can say that it is northwest of the Palladium. Okay. Or if you can see the water tower and the mm -hmm. radio tower there, you'll be able to see our fireworks. Okay, great. But, uh, you know, very high security. Extremely. Area. I mean, look at that. Two degrees with the coffee. Yeah. Room. High high-end buttons with the tech. You got the QR code. Yeah. You got top secret. You got atomic clock. A and we actually push a button to start it. So you back do. in the day, we used to light the fireworks with flares, and oh we would have runners gosh. and mortar tubes. That, now, I can we, see that like out of like a you know yeah it well Christmas vacation, but like with you well, know the Griswolds running with a flare. Yeah, and and we <laughs> that's would, a movie. I could see that. Yeah, we no, would okay. come home and and our shirts and everything would be all burned because you know, the stuff's <laughs> flying that, which is the good old days. Ah, the good ah, old, the days. Good old yeah. days. Now we just press a button and go ooh, ooh. and ah <laughs> and practice your oohs and ahs. Have okay. you been doing that? Yeah. I haven't, but I'll, well, <clears throat> yeah. Me, 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 me. Yeah, let me hear. <laughs> That's no. not what I was saying. I want a little bit more breath. Ooh. There we go. That's better. Yes. Ah. There we go. That's it. But I might have to record that. So I'll play it for everybody. So, yeah. So, make sure you have a real FM radio. Uh -huh. And, you know, if you're outside, uh, maybe you're in your backyard on the third because mm -hmm. we're at the, uh, you know, the east and the west. Maybe you open up a window and throw this, the stereo speaker. Or use your car if you're somewhere out, you know, open the back hatch. But if you use your phone mm -hmm. for streaming, which is what all these young kids want to do today. Right. So I sound like, get off my lawn, don't I? <laughs> well, it doesn't work. It's delayed by five seconds uh, streaming. Oh. And you will not it see won't be, red. You it will not hear same. red when uh, we use see red. Oh, interesting. Or you okay. won't hear the heart song when we throw a smiley face up there. Okay. Yeah. So we've got some great stuff planned. But... Real FM radio. Go, now, you do know you, you do know what I'm talking about. You know oh, what yeah. an FM radio the is. The FM, right? yes, yeah, okay. on the Set radio box. dial. Yeah, okay. I have my boom box there. Yeah. Or you guess you could have it in your car. Well, yeah, yeah, no, the car. Uh, yeah. yeah, lift the hatch, you know, Turn the, layer, yeah. roll the windows down. Yeah. Uh, and your neighbors, everybody. Make sure they're you're blasting away. It's such a beautiful thing. I mean, Carmel Fest has been, I mean, it's a tradition. And, uh, it's a great opportunity for the entire family to come together and enjoy uh, such a great, a great celebration, yeah. and um, and everybody just community coming out and supporting each other, which is beautiful. And really, for the past thirty years of you dedicating oh, your wow. your time and volunteering for that, and Sherry and and your family, yeah. uh, Brad and Amy, how are yeah, they doing? They're doing great. They're all coming home. They for are thirtieth anniversary. Yeah, Amy and her husband from Denver, Brad and his wife. And his daughter, my grandchild, are oh. coming from Arlington Heights. So we'll the Warrells will all be together, and I'm practicing my wave as we go by. So what did you? We mentioned about Iowa, and I read that your father helped coordinate the fireworks each yes. year, year there. Yes. So how? What did? What? It, what tradition? I mean, obviously a major tradition, but I'm talking about volunteerism and the importance of giving back to the community. Obviously, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Your dad must have been an amazing man. He was. He was. Thank you for saying that. Um, he sadly has passed from cancer, but um, he was a lion. Yeah. The Lions Club. Lions you know, Club. Urban yeah. Dale, Iowa. I say, I, I relate it to Carmel. They, the two communities were very similar. And, um, you know, that's what we did on July 4th was he was running around doing his thing. Was he running around with the flare? I, he, would, he was, <laughs> yeah, he was one of those guys, uh, even back then, you know, that was, yeah. um, and so it just, you know, got in my blood and I, we moved to Carmel, at, you know, like 88, I think it was. And I remember sitting on the curb while the Carmel Fest parade went by. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, why am I sitting on this curb? I just felt the need to get involved or, you know, because I just love patriotism and America and mm -hmm. community and all that. So I signed up the very next year. I said, no more curb sitting for me. How about that? Yeah. So you gave up your lawn chair seat spots. I did. To others, I did. Yes, let me I tell did. you, those are premium. Those are real premium, and people start I'm really to ask. early. I'm to ask, do you have your chair out? I don't. Okay, good, good. I don't. I'm uh, going to be on a float 
yes. for ATI. That's right. That we, uh, since Megan Associates joined Actors Theater of Indiana, dear, dear, talented, good, great people, yeah. smart, amazing. And so we started, uh, we, we would have a booth for Carmel Fest, but we were never in the parade. And they, they brought to us the idea of doing, and so we have yeah. amazing people putting together a booth, uh, 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 the, the, um, float. the float. Yeah. Uh, Scott Osborne is designing a great, great float this year. I mean, he did a great job last time yeah. and the time before. And uh, and so through all of Megan Associates and Scott Osborne and, and all of this wonderful design and creativity going towards it. And we sing as yeah. we go through, which well, I got to talk so. to my, my, my dear friends, Judy Judy Fitzgerald and Cindy Collins. We got to come up with our set list. Can you dance but, this, this year also, oh, please? I tried doing that one time. Oh, and I. I, I was like, I jumped off of the float. <laughs> I jumped off of the float one time. People, do not try this at home. Yeah. And I will not try this 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 year because yeah. I tried it and I jumped off because I wanted to dance on the on the on the cement. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So I jumped off of the float when we were at a roundabout place. I learned a very valuable lesson about what not to do. <laughs> the ground is hard. Well, yeah, it is, and I'm not as spry as I used to be. So uh, we, we there might be some little swaying, but we'll definitely be singing. Okay, good, good. Yeah. That's all we can ask. For. Yeah, we'll be yeah, doing that's that. That's great. Awesome. Um, you, uh, so you, I mean, this is also not only with Carmel Fest, but also he was, uh, let's see, this is going off of your the website there on the good old uh, the city of Carmel. Oh. That uh, 1994 and 2004, he was president of the Carmel Chamber of Commerce, which is now called no, uh, One Zone. Uh, he's been on the board of the St. Vincent Carmel Hospital. Uh, the board of the Chris, Carmel Chris Kindle Mart, the obviously Carmel Fest board, Rotary Club of Carmel, Good Day Carmel. Oh, let's talk about Good Day Carmel for a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know what's going on in Carmel, but there is always something going on, many things going on in Carmel. It's tough to keep up with it all, and there's so many things you don't want to, you don't want to have, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out. And so if you go and subscribe to Good Day Carmel, and they you guys are diligent about getting it out as to what's going on for the good for the big week big weekend big, big list. Weekend big list. Yes, yes. Um uh I know you do that every Friday every morning Friday, with yeah. uh the podcast on the Plaza yeah. uh video podcast. Carmel social media. Carmel social media we put it out everywhere who will let us put it out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's marvelous. And the only thing that is difficult is you want to like clone yourself so you can do all of them. That's right. It's like that um, Michael Keaton movie. Did you ever see that? Which Multiplicity. Oh, I have. I, you know what? I'm not good at remembering movies, but I know I saw. But it. he he like he's trying to be a ma, a dad at home with his kids. Yeah. But he has things to do at work, and then he got to go and do this, and so so he would like somehow there was some type of magic <laughs> something, and he was able to clone himself, but each. Each incarnation of his clone gets a little bit slower and a little bit less, you know, with it. light, yeah, you know, yeah, bright yeah, in yeah, the head. Yeah. yeah. So I'm already starting out at a less <laughs> bright version of me. So if there was ever a clone, I'd really be in trouble. But um, but yeah, that's the thing. I mean, go to Good Day Carmel, right? Yes. And how else can they find out about that? Uh, well, if you just go to GoodDayCarmel.com and sign up or subscribe, we put out a daily e-newsletter where we promise to bring you only positive news about the people, the mm -hmm. places, and the things in Carmel, the mm -hmm. things that you might not find in other um, organizations or media. And so it's a chance to give uh, everybody a, a, a chance at maybe becoming a little bit famous or getting their word out, that kind of thing. And then on Fridays, as you said, uh, we actually produce the weekend big list, which is everything going on. I can I have very few weekends where I'm not saying something about ATI because you guys are so busy. Oh, well, it's we amazing. Try to, we try to keep. It's great. Yeah, it's where we've been very blessed, and it's a good thing. I was joking with a friend. I was like, you know, thank. God, I love what I do yeah, yeah. because we are busy, we busy, are busy. Crazy busy. But everybody's busy, and yeah. it's not just us. I mean, it's it's great. That's the great thing about this community is yeah. everybody is in it. And not just to win it. It's just they just know they win by being in. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It it's, does. It's, it's, it's it's great. Wonderful. And um, let's see, 34 resident of Carmel. That's right. That's amazing. So you came here 34 years ago, and you've given 30 years of service mm -hmm. and dedication. It only took four years to get you going. Yeah. But 
Wow. Well, I that's think, amazing. You know, want to want to know what really happened is we went home for Urbandale's Fourth of July because my dad was doing his thing. Yeah. And I caught that. La- you know, for one year maybe Sherry was pregnant or something. We didn't go. Yeah. And I'm sitting there on the curb going, "What am I doing driving to Urbandale? I live here now." So uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's, that's how that all came. Interesting. Out. Yep. Uh, founder of Advantage Medical. Yep. Uh, which is now owned by Script Companies. It is. Yes. Um, that's, so that's what. T- so you know what it's like to start a business. Yes. You know what it takes to be that, and applying all of that to, and also the empathy to others who are trying to start. And I guess that also speaks to your volunteerism. Well, that's you know anyone that's trying to start a business, I can empathize with them and know what it's like managing um, you know employees and customers and. So uh, yeah, that, that what would you say? What would you say would be would have been like of, of the lessons if, to, if you were to impart knowledge to others who yes. are trying to start young businesses and whatever that they have? What uh, you know? What 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 would you impart to them as far as your advice and, and um, expertise? So I I always focused on my on the employees. And, and I know this um, sounds weird, but um, I could take an employee who maybe didn't have all the skills I was looking for. Mm-hmm. I was willing to do that, to invest in them and help them create those skills. Instead of going out trying to find the perfect resume, I would take someone who I thought you know fit with my personality and our company's culture, that kind of thing, mm-hmm. and try and um, create in them the place where I thought they could best shine. And I had employees before I sold the company who had been with me 20, one was 27 years, one was 25 years, another one was in that 22 year range. Um, and then I sold the company, but um, you know, they were just, they were able to just grow and, and we nurtured them. And I think that's really the key. I always heard hire people smarter than me. Well, okay, I mean, I had, you know, accounting firms and lawyers and all that. But when it came to the people actually doing the work, Mm -hmm. um, it was really giving them the chance to grow their skills. Uh, You know, that's what worked for me. That's great. And I had that loyalty and that, you know, Mm -hmm. we're friends and we knew each other and we, you know, our kids grew up together and it just became more of a culture in our company than hiring the hotshot resume. That's great. And we were all a little bit, you know, underachievers or the black sheep or whatever, and we we grew together. Yeah, create. Yeah, it creates a stronger yeah. family. I hadn't really thought about That's that until right. just now. But That's beautiful. Maybe we weren't all the, you know, high achievers. I, I was not a high achiever. <laughs> but you created something that is uh, sustainable. It's longevity yeah. and 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 that family that everybody if they know that they're they can trust there's a sense of trust that you're building also with those employees absolutely and and that value is something where it's like why would i you know this is these are my my peeps yep yeah and so uh we had some really big wins and i sold the company to a national organization and i still work for them do you really i still i still consult and, and help them and they have taken our platform and taken it uh, nationally, and we now have the top two physical therapy chains in the country. You're kidding! Uh, I did yeah, not know that. Yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah, it's it is amazing for a for a company that came from Little Carmel, Indiana. Congratulations! Yeah. And that's another thing about Carmel, Indiana. When I moved here from New York City, uh, along with Judy and Cindy, and I, I it was just constantly, really mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. in Indiana, in Carmel, Indiana. What? I did not know that existed. I did not know this existed. I didn't know it came from here. It was just constant little surprises. Yeah. And even when we bring one of the things I love, uh, talking about creating that culture of, of trust and everybody, you know, little engine that could type of thing, everybody who's come on board with ATI, it's the same type of thing. There's a loyalty that's built up. Everybody kind of knows that we're going to work hard, but we're going to all be really, really proud about the end product. And we hope that also shows with all of our patrons who come to see it and they become emotionally involved also with ATI. But seeing how that all, it, uh, I don't know, it all come, kind of comes together. It's just yeah, beautiful. It, it's is, beautiful. it is wonderful. Um, so, uh, so you are you going to be? Uh, are, aren't you going to be the grand marshal? Yes. How about that, that? Well, unless they change their mind, and they still have time to change their mind. Oh, so, okay. but uh, that is the plan right now. Is, uh, <laughs> yes, at the front of that parade. Yeah. That is awesome and good for you. Yes, yeah, so I'm excited. Sherry and I are both really thrilled to have that. Really, experience. and how did you guys meet? Tell me how you guys met. 
Oh, uh, so, oh boy. But you mean uh, yeah, Iowa, right? We or, met in Iowa. Yeah. I went to Iowa State University. She went to University of Northern Iowa. So since you asked, um, uh-huh. so I my summer, so I, when I was with the university, I worked as an athletic trainer. And that is the guy, I started out as a you know manager. I had no athletic ability. So I'm the guy that when a football player or basketball player got hurt, I run out onto the field and you know help them, tape them up. Come save the day. Yeah, whatever, yeah. So, <laughs> He's so um, humble. I so, love this man. He's so humble. So that was what I grew up wanting to do, thought I would be that forever. And so my summer job, some of the coaches who put on summer camps mm-hmm. would hire me to take care of the campers who were there in the summertime. You know, they would come to the university, stay in the dorms and be, you know, basketball camp or football camp. And one of the camps, my favorite, was a cheerleading camp. And so uh, I got to be the trainer for the cheerleading camp. Twist and, your arm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> So one of the instructors who uh-huh. came to this cheerleading camp was a young lady by the name of Sherry Rolchen from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And it took me, and we worked together two summers, and I kept after her and after her, she would have, I don't get <laughs> people I work with, you're kind of, you know, you're, uh-huh. you're not my type, you know, get away. And the very last, and we would travel, so we would be, we we're coming back from Minnesota doing a camp or whatever. And uh, she finally, on the very last night, said, call me. Oh. So, and then I did. But, of course, then we're going to two separate schools, universities, yeah. and it was, you know, the long distance thing. But it all worked out. All right. And persistence. We've been married, yep. We've been married 37 years. That's beautiful. Yeah. Congratulations. She's awesome. She is awesome. She's yeah. super awesome. Yeah. Well, I don't know how I did it, but she's super awesome. Uh, you guys are, a bit, you guys compliment each other so well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Well, that's just a little bit of behind the scenes about Jeff Worrell. For yeah, those of you who don't know about it, I didn't know about it. I don't that's... think I've told that story very much. Well, I, okay, <laughs> dear diary. This is a this is, we put a little special asterisk next to this episode yeah. for our lunch break with ATI. Uh, we are going to thank you so much for spending. This man is so so busy. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to come and spend with us here at lunch break at thank ATI. You. That's very nice. And this was fun. Yeah, good, good, good. I'm glad you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, uh, well, we are like like Jeff said. We are extremely busy. We got to get back into video auditions for Violet and for Nonsense. We're going to be holding auditions soon, uh, putting notices out for our play, uh, The Mountaintop by Katori Hall, and then our uh, world premiere of Mr. Confidential by Samuel Garza Bernstein and music by David Snyder. We're so thrilled to be able to do a world premiere this uh, this season, the upcoming season. And even today, we are heading out. Uh, my colleague Cynthia Collins and Diana O'Halloran, who was in our reading of Mr. Confidential, we are heading downtown today for a performance for the Ukrainian festival uh, at five o'clock down at the Indianapolis City Market. Awesome. Uh, Svetlana, yeah, who yeah, was yeah. a guest, I met her at a podcast yes, from the plaza. I saw that online. And we're really, really thrilled and honored. Uh, Maria, and I, I don't want to mispronounce her last name, but Maria is the director, a good friend of Svetlana, and Maria is the director, uh, artistic director of a theater called Theater Studio Below, B-E-L-O-E. That's in Geneva, and she is visiting from there. And so Svetlana reached out and said, "Would you want to perform Maria's play at this festival, supporting the Ukrainian society?" And we said, "Of course, it would be an honor." So, if you happen to be downtown at five o'clock at the City Market, come check out what Diana, Cynthia, Svetlana, and Maria and I are doing. It's going to be a great day supporting a very, very important cause and Actors Theater of Indiana. That's a great thing about what you and and this community does is it celebrates everybody here together, but also not only state citywide, not only countywide, but also statewide and also internationally. So it's a really important thing as we all know going on. So thank you so much for spending your time with us today for ATI's lunch break with ATI, and we look forward to seeing you next week, next Wednesday at 12 noon for another episode. Thanks again. Take care, you guys. Bye.